Now she has to. I usually do. Hello, everybody. So this is our live webinar broadcast. It's a bit of a uh, different show tonight, but there are different broadcasts that's going on. Uh, my name is Rowie. I'm from Human Colony. Um, we have Maria contacted me, asking me, can we put on this amazing channel there called Sonia, Sonic Nova? I think she called her. So I am here to introduce. Maria today. Say hello, Maria. Hi, everybody. I just want to say hello to everyone and to our special guest, Sonia. Thank you for coming. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you. I'm honored. So we're excited today because we've got Sonia for uh, about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So she's going to talk a bit about our website. Um, also, she's going to talk about um, a bit of channeling later. So have you got any questions? Um, also, um, Maria and Sabrina want to do a little intro, a little blessing for the intro, is that correct? Yeah, let's do that first. The intro and the blessing would be awesome. Yes, I thought about that because I'm all about energy. Let's clear the energy so we can have, uh, with the intention of, yes. Sabrina, are you going to do that? Sure. Arturian, bring the Arturians in. To Korana, Skiokuru, Kuluna, Sio, Kurakala, and Anana Katuku, Kosi, Kio, Lona, Sakario Kutu, Tiki, Alana, Sakario Kutanus, Kuru Kutu Kulu Akata, Yi, Kurunus, Kuru Kulu Kutunus, Kuru Kulu Alala, Nario Kotokolona, Sakio Kotoniaki, Ki, Alana, Sakata Katakata, Yu Kulunus, Ki Alaka. Noru ala kia takala nasi ali o kutu akata kata o ria kata kato son to kutu akata. Desi tiania ala tarmete kiana ku asa takiana arama iare takuno sama in isiniana ala takuno. Ro, if you have any introduction or anything, and if you don't, then we can start with Sonia. Great. Do you want me to start and introduce myself? Please, sure, Sonia. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Sonia Novik, um, a.k.a. also known as Sonic Nova. And um, I am not a Pleiadian, <laughs> like you guys are. I'm from another star system in the Andromeda um, galaxy. Um, it's called um, Rajanma, is the name of my home planet. <clears throat> it's a watery planet and also a uh, air planet. And we do have like crystals that are hanging from the sky, and that's where we live, and in the water too underwater. So we're kind of a mix of a fairy and a mermaid kind of mix. It's a pretty interesting place. Anyhow, to get back to my website is Sonic Nova, S-O-N-I-C-N-O-V-I-C dot -I net. <clears throat> it's pretty easy to find. And um, I have been actually channeling the uh, Avatar Consciousness Group or Group Consciousness Wow, since 2007 is where they actually appeared in my life and started channeling them. Um, so part of what I do on my website, the introduction that Maria wanted me to share with you guys is I do uh, avatar group consciousness soul infusions, which is basically where I channel them and they do a soul. They help you have a soul infusion. We were just talking about what soul infusions are, and I'll get into it a little bit. Uh, I do spiritual guidance, intuitive healing. Um, extrasensory self-development. I teach people how to channel like I do um, and do remote healing and do um, quantum healing, remote ha quantum healing and trans channeling and also conscious channeling um, <clears throat> and so much more. Um, so I'm going to go down the list of all the things that I offer on my website. Um, uh, I, I was born as a remote viewer um, and also a psychic. I've been like this my whole life. Uh, I do mediumship, which means that I'm a facilitator between you and your deceased loved ones. Um, 
Mediumship is nothing more than telepathic communication, and I know all you guys are pretty advanced and are already doing that. Um, <clears throat> I'm a master herbalist and nutritional supplement intuitive coach, and I know how to cure uh, with foods and uh, nature's best remedies, as well as doing the, like the remote healing, uh, the quantum healing. And um, part of what I do with that is I use the universal source to come through me and then charge your bodies and shift and change what needs to be changed, um, whatever your body will accept when we do those uh, remote quantum healing sessions. Um, master telepath, pet communicator uh, and healer, uh, life architect coaching and light transmission energy healer, um, psycho-spiritual soul infused Infusion reconnecting. Can, um, can I like, stop you here for a second? Yeah. Okay, life architect. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So what I mean by that is that I'm actually helping you design the life that you desire. So in a sense, it's like a it's 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 a nice way of saying life coach because we address all the different areas and we address all the different bodies that we have. Uh, not just this physical body that's here in front of you, but all the bodies that we have um, and, and how they affect this reality and other multi-realities that you are simultaneously living in. Does that okay, so you, yeah, so you would do that over a series of sessions? Is that how you would yes. do it? It depends. You know, it really depends on the individual. Uh, some, some individuals are very quick and do this very quickly rapidly like Maria is super fast she catches on super fast and others take more time so I really let the individual pace themselves does that make sense yes yes cool. thank you okay. you're welcome <laughs> um, <laughs> then the um, the soul infusions there was there was definitely who was it here M Michelle was asking me about that and I want to tell you guys a little bit about that um, usually our soul is hanging out above us, like way above us, because the ego is so busy here in these bodies. It's kind of funny because when you leave your body and you die, well, you transition because you never really die, your soul then takes the front seat and your ego takes the back seat. <laughs> so what I assist people with and I coach them with and I support with is to bring more of your soul into your body. So, because the soul is what's infinite. The soul is what actually has infinite knowledge, infinite um, experience, infinite knowing. And really, when the soul starts to navigate this vehicle, the vessel, the physical vessel, you tend to end up steering yourself in the right directions and attracting amazing things in your life that otherwise, when the ego, and this is my personal experience, but you guys are probably going to relate to this. That when I have my ego navigating this body, oh, <laughs> my life would really turn upside down constantly, okay? Um, and especially the ego has a lot of fear. The soul doesn't because the soul knows it's infinite, okay? So that's what, about, what the soul infusions are about, is working with the shadow material that the ego is holding on to and actually assisting in that process of... Um, and I, I, I like the word evaporating as opposed to a word that would be like pushing or kicking or fighting. Any of those words are really like painful to me and to my body and to other people's bodies as well. So I like to use the word evaporate. That if we actually work with the shadow material and we let it evaporate itself and we sit with it and we're not in, um, it, we're not, uh, like forcing or, or pushing or actually resisting it, it just naturally kind of unfolds itself. It's really amazing when you have those experiences, when you pass through um, one of these places that are very, very, like there's a shadow piece that's very, very dark and very, very stuck, and you're able to finally move into it and unwind it, the other side of it is where the soul can come and start embedding into your body. And that is quite spectacular and an amazing experience. I've had quite a few experiences myself. 
<laughs> so I'm literally talking from experience here, and that's how I could coach other people. Everything that I do, I've actually done myself. If I haven't done it, like when people ask me, well, could you be my asc ascension coach? I go, well, I'm still here, so I guess I can't, you know? You better talk to somebody that's done it, that literally has, like, disappeared with their body and come back, because that's not me. You know, so all the things that I do here on my website and that I work with people, I literally actually have done already. That's one that I haven't mastered yet. Um, there was one experience where I actually, all that was left was my head and my torso. Um, my legs and my arms were gone. And uh, my cat didn't want me to leave, so my cat jumped on my chest. And when I came sort of back to this dimension, I didn't have arms to hug him. I was like, where did my arms go? And I didn't freak out. And I brought him back, and I brought my legs back. But that's as far as I got. So I know that we have that ability to be able to do that. Um, since we're 99% empty space, but we appear to have this physical vehicle, that's how, you know, it just all kind of unfolded itself. So the other thing that I do is life coaching in all areas of life. Um, I'm a certified remote viewer. I did get certified. Um, even though I was born this way, and I do future potential readings in all areas of life, like career, finances, spiritual, integration, um, actually connecting with your your star family. That's one of my favorite things to do, is to do a soul life reading. Um, it's not a past life reading, it's a soul life reading of the origins of your soul and where it started. Um, what planetary system or what galaxy or what universe um, that's one of my favorite things to do. So that has something to do with these future potential readings. Um, and then I also discuss like relationship readings. That, that's one of the things how, we, you know, in a way, Maria and I talked about this a little bit. Of what is a soulmate? What is a twin flame? What's a twin soul? What's a twin ray? Um, really get into the meat of that because a lot of people have uh, misperception. And there's a lot of books that have been written that are, misperceiving what really is our twin. And they come in several varieties. It's not just like you have one and that's it. Um, like we were talking about earlier, and I was actually um, saying that we are infinite beings. Um, and in these bodies, we come into these bodies. And it's very interesting because there are people that have documented this, that they look down at their body when they've had a near-death experience, and they go, how am I going to fit in there? you know, in their bodies. Um, so that's one of the things that we talk about. The other thing that I do um, is I do virtual 12 strand DNA activations where basically the purpose of this is to enhance your five inner senses, your clara senses, um, and to really get you to be able to start doing um, some, what, what they would call here superhuman stuff, but it's not. It's part of our DNA. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but obviously, you know, since you guys are, you know, accepting our other ET uh, nature is that we probably have about 124 strands of DNA that are non-human, that are ET, and that there's been that much that has been, been put into a human body. So, <clears throat> so there's that many different races that can come into a physical human body and have this experience is because they have, you have that DNA to, to reach into. Um, so that's one of the things that the virtual 12 strand DNA does as well is it awakens our ET strands. Um, and when I do, when people take the courses that I teach and how to do all this, I actually um, do an ordination where we do, instead of a 12 strand DNA, we actually go to 24 strand DNA. And that's a pretty amazing thing to experience um, because then you have 24 strands that you're operating in instead of 12. And it goes in multiples of 12. So it's 12, 24, you know, it keeps going 36, and you just keep going up the ladder. Um, and that's our destiny. Um, your soul itself, when it's not in a human physical body, it doesn't have all these limitations, it is fully activated. So... But we forget that. When we come into a human body, we kind of leave all that behind and we have to like relearn it. Um, or what I would have to say is that we have to re, um, recalibrate ourselves back into our divine true nature. Um, 
And then, like I said, I do the starseed readings where we discover the divine soul origins um, and what's why you're here, what's your purpose in life. I do do past life Akashic recorded uh, record readings uh, where I go into the Akashic records, which is in your, I'll speak of that, about that, in one of your cellular bodies. Um, I do, actually, I've had two near-death experiences, um, and I could talk about that a bit and what that experience was like. And then I do, um, I've been channeling, like I said, the Avatar group consciousness for about seven, eight years, um, and they're a pretty phenomenal group. You'll get, you guys will get to experience it. Um, there's been times when I've been doing group channelings, and especially when I did them live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was living there for a while. That 150 of these beings would come into my body and channel to all these people, and that was really an incredible frequency. So <clears throat> we'll see what happens today, because I am going to do that for you guys tonight. So we'll just have to see what happens. And then the other thing that I do is I do uh, what I call a qu quantum cord cutting. Um, so whatever doesn't serve you anymore, we cut the cords between you and that other individual. Um, and depending to what level you want to do that, we could do that. And then spiritual en en entity and ET, um, implants that are not positive implants, um, are removed if people want that. So I do offer those services as well. So that's kind of part of what I do. <laughs> so do you have any other questions or do you want me to um, get into one of these subjects? What would you like me to do, Maria? Um, you know, what? if you could explain a little bit more about the 12 strand, how do you do that? Do you do that in a class? No, uh, I actually... Are those private? How do you, how do you work that? Okay, so if let, like let's say we were going to do a class and there was a group of people that were going to take the intuitive class um, or a group of people that just wanted to do a group activation. I can do those in a setting like this, um, but it actually, it, it probably would be easier to do it in person because what happens is I don't do those. I actually trans-channel the avatar group consciousness and they do a group a group activation. So what okay. I usually do, since since I don't have the ability to be there, um, and they touch people, and they do all kinds of things, and they send their frequency out. Um, so when I used to do the group activations, it would be in public. I haven't done one yet, but I think I'd be willing to try it out and see what happens, you know, if you guys are game um, to do group activations. Um, I do them privately now. And what people do is they actually do a private session with me. I usually request that they spend at least 45 minutes with me um, because if they're, if any of their chakras, which is where the centers are, the energy centers are, where the DNA strands unravel, um, have blockages, emotional blockages, that's what takes the time. For beings that are really clear and don't have a lot of emotional baggage, in the different chakras, in most of the chakras that I find that people have baggage, communication, the throat, definitely the heart, solar plexus, power center, and the root chakra are usually the ones that actually I find that there's there's blockages, there's there's different things going on that take a little bit of us unwinding that first and then activating it. So it's usually like a 45-minute session, and people either get recalibrated or activated. So hopefully that answers your question. The way I ended up doing this, and I'm telling you, all this happened like automatically, simultaneously. This is what this wasn't like one day I went, oh, I'm going to do 12-strand DNA activations. It happened actually while I was doing an avatar group consciousness uh, channeling in Las Vegas, Nevada. And there was a group of about 15 people that came to a home, and they started to do these. Um, they started to do the activation. They said, "Well, we're going to do 12 strand DNA activation." And when I came back to, because I was doing a trans channel, I wasn't home. I was like, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> After they had already been done, it was like, "Wow!" And and so it was really interesting because somebody actually we did a recording of it. Um, People came to that session, and there was this guy that was about 70 years old that had lung issues his whole life, and he was completely healed um, after we did the activation. Um, 
So it's interesting how people experience different things, and that's the thing I want to share with all of you is that everybody has a different experience when they get their 12 strands activated. Um, some people miraculous, miraculously in like manifest like money, cars, things that they've been wanting. Other people start having all their inner senses fully activated. Um, other people, ha it's just a myriad of things. Other people have like a lot of the, and I do, I do warn people and tell them, you know, if you have a lot of shadow material that you haven't worked on your emotional body, that will arise when after we do the 12 strand DNA activation. It will come up, and some people come back to me and go, I feel horrible, and I go, just, you know, and just breathe and feel into it, and it just moves very quickly, and then when that clarifies itself and it evaporates, then you end up having this amazing experience, and then I have other people that come, I do the 12 strand DNA activation, and they're high as kites for days on end, or weeks. I had a woman that was high as a kite for a month. She kept coming yeah. to me and just totally being high about it. Um, so it's just like the whole, you know, I want to give you the full gamut so that there's no, ex when people ask me, what can I expect? I go, that's up to you. I don't know what's going to arise out of you, what has been worked on, what hasn't. But I can tell you this, that it really amplifies everything within you so that whatever it is that the, whatever is blocking you from moving forward, Will will just come up and and kind of like be effervescent, you know, like a soda drink that just goes fizz fizz pop pop and gone, and all of a sudden you have this amazing clarity. And I kind of get that sense from the work that Maria and I did, you know, that after we yes, did the exactly. I was gonna say I you know we did work together, although I didn't have too much baggage and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> But there was this connection, there was kind of like this connection to your twin flame. Actually, it it was the more of getting my power back. I, yes. That was my, I always tend to small, make myself a small, I know my issues. <laughs> make my make myself a small, to, so I other people feel comfortable around me. But I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> So, so you know, part of what you're, and what we did more with Maria was a recalibration, I would call it that. Um, and we did activate, because she had eight of her chakras, eight of the DNA strands already activated. So we only had four, four to go, you know. So what I did is we actually recalibrated the eight that were already activated, really got them, like, firing on all cylinders, and then the four that were dormant, we activated those. So to give you an example, I have another friend of mine, her name's Kim, and she had 10 of her strands activated, and she couldn't get past that. And she's, she does amazing, like, grid work on the planet. Um, and she couldn't get past that, and we did the two other strands. And all of a sudden now she's, like, full-blown, you know, moving forward and doing all of her grid work and not having any kind of blockages there. So that kind of gives you the gamut, you know, the range. And then I have people that have had two strands. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> it's funny because I don't call them that, but the, the, the avatar group consciousness used to call beings that people that would come to me and they would go, oh, they have two strands. They're, they're afterwards, not in front of them. They would say, oh, they're Neanderthals. <laughs> you know, they, they would call them like... Um, you know, like they have that forehead that's really protruding. It was kind of funny. You gotta be you gotta be careful in today. What's that? Uh, we gotta be careful. I, I I believe what we need is more kindness, not cleverness. So I, that was them so, being joking around. It wasn't yeah, like I, they were. I, I used to do it in other circles as well, where we used to call people sheep if they didn't if they followed a certain pattern. And what I right. really realized by calling them sheep, we're actually excluding them. From being in part yes, of right. what you, the oneness of everything, so right. I felt that's very important. I just wanted to put in there. Thanks, Sonny. Sure. sure. I was just what I wanted to say is that they were very, they're very humorous. Okay. They're, they take things very lightly, so just take it with a light heart instead of, you know, looking at at them being judged or. But they would get activated to twelve strands, and like to give you an example, there was a woman that came and got her a DNA activated. 
And she walked into her office the next day. And now after that, I remembered I, I would tell people, make sure you ground yourself. So that's what I do now is after I do the 12-strand DNA activation, I actually um, literally put like a, a, a protective and grounding layer on you because this woman walked into her office and there was 20 computers and every as she was walking through the office she blew every computer out in that office blew it out literally I mean the computer stopped working it crashed it did blue screen and stopped working and it was her frequency that was so high that it affected the electricity around them right because we're made out of electricity so now what I do is to prevent that I usually you know, ground people and get get all of the energy around them and all their electronic equipment, their cell phones, any kind of equipment around them. We we recalibrate it back or up to the level that that person has risen to. So that's the other thing that has happened that that was quite interesting to me and quite mind blowing. You know, is that she was putting out such a high frequency that it was actually blowing out the electronic equipment around her or people that have told me that about their cars you know we'll do the DNA activation but because I do it differently now um, I actually don't they don't have that experience anymore but I didn't used to because I I was new at this and I was channeling it and I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know what to expect so people had all these kinds of kind of wild crazy experiences and it was interesting because people would call me and go Oh my god, my car won't start. And I would just tell them to put their hands on the car and ask the car to actually raise its frequency to to for you to putting your hands on the car and asking for the frequency to be raised at your level. And all of a sudden they would get in the car and the car would start. Or their cell phone would stop working and computers would do that. Like Avatar movie, I love that movie when they were having the ride. <laughs> I always match the frequencies. That's what I always do. I try to match the frequency before I even talk to someone. Right. Have that heart connection. I'm mm -hmm. all about frequency first, then I'll come down to physics, which I'm learning how to do that. That con con connection, physical connection. <laughs> well, you know, and that, and I totally agree. Um, with you that we all have to learn to be kinder to ourselves and to others you know and kinder and one of the beautiful things that I tell people is when people go oh, I made a mistake and I go no you didn't this is how we learn this is how we're learning how to do this with one another with ourselves so that's really critical and really important you know is to actually be really kind to our physical bodies because um, our physical bodies are part of, are connected to the rest of our bodies, right? And the rest of the multiverse that we are. Um, literally, what I I know because I've had this experience is that we not this is just a vehicle that we're in here, but we have other levels of us that go to other dimensions, and that's why you know some of you can actually speak Pleiadian. I can't. <laughs> you know. Um, and some of you have that very strong connection to your home planet is because you are there simultaneously as here. And I know that's really hard to grasp, but that's one of the things that the DNA activation does as well, is that all, all of a sudden you'll start to bilocate. And you'll be able to be, and that's happened to me where I've been, literally I know I'm sleeping in my bed, I'm having this dream, and I'm actually dreaming simultaneously in three or four different places and I can and I've been conscious of all places simultaneously because we are multidimensional beings right would you guys agree with that oh, yes. I do I do <laughs> oh yes you a big 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 yes just wanted to let you know Sonia you First, when we started talking, you told me you're picking up Pleiadian so much of yes I do have that Pleiadian but it, I, today I figured out not only that I have you know Arturian and all other the other beings. They were telling me I have even Grace family, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're very infamous. They said they're good Grays, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> they are. You know, it's it's kind of like you know I have a I have somebody that I have great respect for. His name, and I know you're gonna know who he is, George Kavasilas. 
Um, I've listened a lot to his workshops. I haven't literally gone to them. I have gone to some of them like, like we're doing here with me. And he talks about that. And he talks about how not to be racist against ETs. Because there are good ETs, like, like reptilians. Literally, there are some very evolved reptilians. And then there's the very unevolved reptilians, as there are grapes. And what I'm starting to understand is that the, at the soul level, okay, whether you're a human or a gray or a reptilian or an Arcturian or a Pleiadian, there are different grades of maturity of the soul that inhabits that physical body in that planet system in that dimension um, just like we have here you know what that we have like what so meanly okay <laughs> the avatar group consciousness would call the the unevolved souls that were here you know that came to get their DNA activated just like that we have that variance that goes across the board across all universes and all planetary systems you know so we're just, we need to look at that with compassion and go, you know, maybe in this, in this moment, I'm a little bit more advanced than them, but it's my responsibility to assist them and support them in getting to where I am, because we're all in that, in that incredible, what I call, sea of creation, okay, that if you can imagine this beautiful, um, if you were floating in the stars and there's this vast ocean of stars that you're that you're like swimming or floating on we're all floating and there's some that are behind us there's some that are ahead of us right there's just that there's a there's there's multiple variables and in infinite variables because we are truly at the core of us our infinite beings and what my ultimate goal in doing all this work for those that are ready is for you to have that connection with what I call the infinite self. And it was very interesting because when I was doing the avatar group consciousness um, workshops in Vegas where I, I channel the avatar for a year, an hour or two hours and tell people amazing things, they always used to say, they always used to introduce, I would introduce them and then they would introduce me and they'd say, you know, she's one of us. They call me the little one. It was their, They made a lot of jokes, you guys. It was kind of cute. You know, and what they basically would say is, you're one of us. And I was like, after the channeling, I'd go, I'm not one of you. How can I be? You guys are, like, expansive, big. You see things from such a big perspective. And they, they, I would say that, and then they would come back and channel again, and they'd go, how can you not be one of us? If you weren't one of us, we wouldn't be able to channel through you. You know, so it's, they started to give me that, that perception of the greatness that each and every one of us is. Whether we incarnate as a reptilian, as an Arcturian, as a Pleiadian, as a Grey, I had an amazing conversation with the Greys. And why they came here and did what they did, because they had got hoodwinked, okay, um, by our secret government. And what was so cool is when I had I had the communication with two different groups of greys. One was more like a bee, you know, literally an insectoid gray bee, and then the other one was like an ant. So they're all they're all a, a hive mind, right? And they all, and they have to have their queens because if their queens are the ones that procreate and if the queens die, and that's why they got our DNA here on Earth and that's why they came down here and they did all the, what they did. But what was so amazing is that they told me, they said, you know, we have had five to ten generations of a mix of, mix of, of humanoid with us, with the gray, you know, whether it was bee or whether it was ant, and they said the most amazing thing is that we discovered through the genetic codes that you are like us and that you're not at all like you they portrayed us to that you would be. They portrayed humans to be stupid, you know, uh, don't care about the environment, and we realized that we got hoodwinked. And what was so cool is that they actually told me because there was some, you know, n the unevolved reptilians that were here who hoodwinked them with with our, you know, 
what I call half-breed reptilian, half-humans that are here now on the planet um, that are basically, now we're changing the dynamic obviously because we're all here, but that we're actually controlling the paradigm here. And they literally told us, they went, you know, the master races that were here on your planet, all of the reptilians, like the, the reptilian bloodlines that, that were the royal bloodlines laughed and they were going to go travel to their world to conquer them but they said we're so grateful that you literally provided us the DNA and the memories in the DNA of what was done to you so now we know who we're dealing with and we know that really the human race is truly a benign kind race um, and we can align with you so look at this okay Look, I, I always look at things and I go, wow, you know, from a really horrible, bad, what we perceive here, what our ego perceives here is bad and ugly and how they, could they do this to us, turn into a, it turned into, into an incredibly beautiful transformation of a gift, of a divine gift that they received. They received new life. Their queens now can procreate because we... You know, unbeknownst or beknownst to us, unconsciously, I know that we make agreements before we come into these bodies and because we're all knowing, the soul is all knowing, it does choose to have these experiences, you know. And because we are infinite beings that don't die, we really don't die, we transform. When we leave the body, we're just transforming ourselves. So and we, Anya, we have questions. Sure. Somebody, I guess, yeah, on the side, chat side. Yeah. Chris is first with her question. Chris, did you want to go ahead? Okay. Hi, Sonia. Hi. Um, it's nice to meet a fellow vegan. And cool. I'll be happy to connect in with your avatar crew. Cool. Um, on the sidelines. I was wondering, um, do you pick up any information? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, when I have, is, when I have permission, when I have permission, I won't do it unless I'm asked. And yeah. and the avatar group consciousness will definitely come in, and they usually are the ones that'll come in and talk to you guys. And you know, obviously, we all have a lot of great respect for for every single individual, and their free will so if they choose for us to to go into their field then yes we do we do answer questions of that nature I meant like is there a little message like you can maybe give if anyone else wants a message like you can you mean, you yeah that's what I meant like just a little tidbit since there's not much time for us all sure um Okay, so immediately what came in is that there's a question about evolution um, and about, you know, there's there's some like, he, here's what I get. There's, there's a very, there's an aspect of you that's very, very, very evolved and yet there's these other aspects that are kind of hanging really behind and wondering, well, there's many times that you ask yourself, what am I, why am I here? Why am I going through this? Um, why is all this happening? Especially when there's the appearance of what appears to be really hard lessons. Um, and like I said, it's like you came, you chimed in right at the right time because I was talking about, that's one of the things that I'd like you to reflect on is those really horrible experiences that you've had this lifetime to really reflect didn't they actually turn to be great teachers and didn't they turn out to be like great gifts? Yeah, you summed up my life thus far. Thus far, pretty perfectly. Thank you. That was a beautiful timeline reading and synchronistic to where you left off in your conversation. I will let somebody else go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Chris. Okay, is there anyone else that wants to ask a question right at this time? And if I, not... I will. Oh, go for it. Okay, who's this? This is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. 
Hey. So I guess I would be curious to hear, hear the same thing. It's been a very weird day. That's what you said is, okay, so immediately when you were talking about that and we're kind of having a little group talk here before all of you guys got here, I immediately got what's going on with you. Okay, yeah. so there, there are aspects of, of your personality, the ego personality, that is not wanting to let go, that it's holding on for dear life, kind of like Humpty Dumpty, okay? So I really feel like it would really serve you to do some, some um, soul retrieval work as well as doing actually the soul infusion work because I see that there's literally like there's a... a a separation of it's the personality that's separated from some experiences that you're having that actually is like resisting and pushing away in order to allow the new to come in. Don't be you know that it's great to just allow it to itself and there's a part of you that is resisting. So that's why I immediately saw. Oh that's interesting. Oh, sorry, Michelle, there was background noise happening and she was talking. Okay. Okay, um, it's interesting and dead on because when I went into, when I felt breaking down, I reached out to somebody and they channeled Yeshua who said, you are a great warrior, it is safe to let go. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I really concentrated on that whole situation, the kind of breakdown of reality is what it felt like. Um, right. And, and, and it is a breakdown of reality for like, your ego, right? Letting go. I couldn't tell what it was, but I just knew I was supposed to let it go, so I kept sending it's safe. It's safe. It's safe. Let go. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. I think Any Mallory have a question. I do. Thank you, Maria. Um, Sonic, this is my first chance of talking with you. Hi, and what's your name? My name is Valerie. Hi, Valerie. And I would just like, if I don't know how fast you can do like a soul reading or something like that, but um, something like that would be nice if you can. Okay. Um, you mean like origins of your soul or like a starseed yeah. reading? Okay. Yeah, like origins. I wanna, I wanna be really clear here. <laughs> So I don't like get, lead you on the wrong path. Okay. Right. So, um, so I'm I'm actually you come from a music of a wow a planet. Sorry, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> that happens to me. A planet of of like um, music in celestial music. Um, and I'm trying to see if it's in this solar system or not. It isn't. Um, it's not even in this galaxy. It's not in a neighboring galaxy. Um, what I I was shown like the I don't know if you know. Have you ever seen the Sombrero Galaxy? Um, but you can find it. And literally, that's what they're showing me is that you come from that galaxy. It is in this universe. Um, that your origin of your soul actually was created there um, and that you have some codes that are literally like music notes and I don't know if you actually like this lifetime have the ability to either compose or play music or or do that but that you have that component in you because that's the origin of your planetary system is a sound system I hope that makes interesting sense. Interesting. No, I have not ever done any music or anything like that, so it's pretty That was my sense is that it's kind of foreign to you. Um, yeah. But literally that there's like codes that need to be un unwound in you that would cause you to, to actually start to bring that forth. Because um, okay. that's part of the reason why you're here on this planet. And that if you don't bring it forth like in notes or in sounds that it would be it could be brought in mathematically or it could be brought in in writing um, there's other forms to bring it in 
I am pretty much an artist in a lot of different ways, but um, not too much of a writer and not a singer. <laughs> I'm not a musician. <laughs> so, bring it like in. Do you actually paint or draw, or what do you do? Um, right now, I've, I'm doing sewing and I tie stones. Um, I have painted, drawn. Okay. It's pretty much any so, kind of art. So, you may try and do it that way. And then the other thing that it really like I'm I'm literally like talking to your higher self your soul what I call the infinite self and what I'm getting really strongly is to start do you ever hum when you sew like you're humming tunes or not yeah, like I hum all the time uh -huh. <laughs> there it is <laughs> so this you know the the voice that actually the 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 third chakra right to really start expressing that and really bringing those sounds as as weird or as cool as they may sound and start recording them because there is a frequency there that you need to bring into this planet and that that's why you're here. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Is, so, oh, if anyone doesn't mind, um, I'm, I'd like to jump in. I, I hope there wasn't an order that I just trampled no, on. It's okay, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> After you, it's okay. Sabrina. Oh, I apologize, Sabrina. I'm, I apologize. I didn't know there was an order. Cool. Sorry. It's cool. Um, hi, hi, ma'am. I think this is the first time I've met you. Um, hi, so who are you? Not, my my oh, name is yeah, Amy. My name is Amy. And, um, hi, Amy. <laughs> nice to meet you. I was, just, um, I was just wondering if there's anything that you could tell me about myself that perhaps I don't know. I, I guess that's a general question, but since I've never met with you before, I wasn't sure where to start. So, Well, why don't we start at the beginning? <laughs> okay. It's always great to start at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> and then it kind of goes into item. So, like, instantly, I, I picked up. There's a little bit, you know, there's great power within you, but there's a great amount of shyness. And almost <laughs> like, like you're coming out of your cocoon, but you're not quite sure. Um, yes. And what I have to say is that you need to be surrounded by people that are supportive of you. There's been a lot of family members and a lot of old friends that are kind of like going against the grind. You know, they're they're not as evolved as you are, and they're not, they're afraid of your power. You and Maria should talk. <laughs> <laughs> Because you guys could become best friends, and she could really help you come out of your shell and not be afraid of your power. Because you know, I feel it like rumbling underneath you. But up front, you're like so like shy and so kind of like meek about it. But it, it really, you know, that's really calling out to be expressed. And in order to express it, you need to surround yourself with people that will permit you to do that and won't feel intimidated by it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, by power, though, by power, though, what does that mean? Like, like expressing who you really are and not being afraid to share that with the people that are around you. Okay. So it's it, so so instead of like. And I'm not saying, you know, there, I feel, I, I also feel this at the same time, I'm going to go into past life reading real quick with you, is that I totally feel that there, there's a past life where there was a misuse of power. And that the idea of, of being powerful scares you because of that misuse, you know, of that previous life. So that's something that, you know, I would suggest that we do some work on if you choose to in the future. I've actually been told by several channelers, actually, that... In a lot of my lifetimes, I did hold a lot of power, and that I'm used to being like a warrior type of person and very powerful. And this is like a totally different reversal of situations in this lifetime. So, mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. Yeah, well, it's there. It's just a thing about bringing it up and out so that you could really express your full beingness. You know what I mean? As opposed to having it suppressed. Yeah, yeah. 
suppressed and depressed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, obviously, suppression is depression, you know. Yeah. So that will actually unwind the depression and it'll unwind and evaporate that aspect that you've been holding yourself really small, you know. Yeah. Okay, and okay I think. Oh, okay. Sorry. Great. Okay. Great. I think Next Sabrina one. has a question as well. Go for it. Thank you. I don't know. If, do you need to see me? <laughs> no, it's okay, Sabrina. I've seen you okay. before. Okay. Um, so my question is, and I don't know if you can, my beginnings, uh, my you, very, very beginnings. Of your soul. I know, um, uh, I suppose it's the soul. I'm not quite sure. Um, okay. Yeah. But I guess we would say the soul or, or me. Um. I know what part of one part is. Okay. I don't know what the other part is. Um, and I was wondering if you could shed any light on that. Sure. So there's like there's a part aspects of your beginnings that are foggy to you, that are yes. kind of nebulous. Okay. Yes. And then this other aspect that you are very like embedded in, right? And you're already yes. expressing that here, now, you know, in this physical body. Okay, let's look at yeah. let let's look at what what's hidden behind the veil or the fog. Okay, so right away, what came to me? Wow. It, and there was a lot of information get, that got poured into me, um, was that there's there's an aspect of you, um, literally, like an aspect, not of your personality, an aspect that is unraveling and revealing this very um, higher beingness um, that what I got instantly is that if it was all revealed to you at once, you would feel like your your head's been turned upside down, um, and and what I saw is literally um, I saw like a lattice, like an electronic, like an electric. It was like an electric blue lattice. Um, so that that to me tells me that there's been like you constructed this lattice within yourself, within your soul, to not have access till the right time came. Um, and what I'm wanting to do is go behind the lattice to see what is there. Um, and what I'm seeing is is kind of like a mix of, you know, the the movie that was like the Avatar movie. I'm sure you guys all saw that. The beings there um, that look blue and have the kind of cat bodies but human bodies. And I also mm -hmm. saw another being that was actually also... Um, I forget the name of that movie where they had the superhumans, you know, that could transform themselves. And there was this woman that would trans that she would turn blue and have like these. X Men. Yeah, X Men. Yeah. Yeah. You know which which woman I'm talking about? Raven. And, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a combination of both of those, and that's originally the. So you are a, a kind of I don't want to say mutant, but you can mutate into these different beings because there are aspects of you, um, and that you have those abilities and those powers, um, and that that has been hidden from you. Um, again, it it all boils down to the same thing for all of us. When we incarnate in these bodies and we incarnate in, incarnate at this time on this in this planetary system. You know, we were embedded with these very negative programmings about power and about our inner powers and our powers of transmutation, of transformation. Um, and what I saw is that that's, those are all aspects of you that sometimes feel very kind of like split um, and that you may want to start working on integrating. Does that make sense to you, what I just said? Yes. What I yes. Just saw? Um, because... <laughs> Maria knows this. <laughs> um, the, the movie Lucy has a very interesting 
effect on me. Um, <laughs> and um, it's happened twice, but it just takes me flying. Um, okay. And I just, just part of me just takes off. Right. Um, so I can see what you're talking about. Um, but it's it's that movie, that particular one, the one that I seem to identify with the most. Okay. So I, that's the aspect, yeah, that I'm trying to figure out what it is. So here's what I would do. since Instead of trying to figure it out, because <clears throat> that, when you try to figure things out, right, it kind of causes a little bit of resistance. Does that make sense? If you yes. just, like, instead of trying to figure it out, to sit with those aspects and just be with them would be my advice. To just, and not, you know, maybe not all of them at once, maybe all of them at once, try different things and just let it unfold itself. Let the journey unfold itself as opposed to you trying to force them to open to Kind of like what I what I do inner child work with people, and I ask them to be with their inner child, to hold their inner child, you know, to love it, the inner child when they've been dejecting it or rejecting it or putting it, like I call it, in the dungeon, the, the unconscious. To do those things with these aspects of you that I described, and to just like, like if you were looking at a friend and holding their hands and having that like eye contact with them where you're just being present with them and just feeling them and I feel like if you start feeling them they'll start to come alive in you and you'll start to recognize yourself and recognize those aspects of you okay so so like with with the images the what what you just mentioned before to try and sit with those images is that what you're not necessarily images that I mentioned, but that movie that you said, was it Lucy? Mm -hmm. Did you see it? I haven't did you, seen did you it. See? No, I'll have to go look at it now. Oh, you, you got to you gotta go look at it. Oh, yeah. And, I am. And, I'm going to go see it. And it just, it, it is crazy. The last one, Maria had to, like, bring me back. Wow. Because um, I, just, I just took off. Um, wow. Ask her. Oh, I don't want to experience that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to leave my body to bring her back, probably I would have gotten lost myself. But <laughs> I, I had to do that. Yeah. So <laughs> it. So I don't know if I should just like watch the movie and let go, or. Um. You could do that. Um. Or if that's just too risky, but she. I think it's a, it's a little bit. I think it's a little bit too risky. I think what you need to do is connect. And I, since I haven't seen the movie, I can't really relate to it. But basically, connect. basically in the movie, um, the woman learns how to use 100% of her brain. So she activates all kinds of things within her. Okay. And she could feel, see, hear everything, the heartbeats, the blood flowing, ev every single thing, you know, connect to everything and see everything's energy, you know, so that was, that was that movie. At the end, it gets a little weird, but that's not, I know right. that's not real. Um, but the premise of it, obviously, is that this being was able to activate all parts of their brain and... Just keep in mind that the brain, the real brain, is here. Right. <clears throat> so, <laughs> on there, instead of yeah. here. Yeah. Yes, so, I agree. <laughs> okay, and, and start integrating those aspects, because the information will come to you is what I saw. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Should we, should okay. we do that? Channeling, Maria, for everybody. Yes, I have a yes. question, quick question, and then channeling, if you don't mind. I want to ask them. You, you never told me what's my soul origin. Quickly, just <laughs> <laughs> out of curiosity, I'll take this. <laughs> so let me get into you. Yeah. And um, basically, what I'm doing when I do that, you guys, is I literally go into your your soul 
and I go into the Akashic body, which is literally the, the causal body is what it's called. And I go into the cell or cells in the memories that are there, and I go way, 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 way back to the beginning. So water, definitely, you know, that's probably why you're so comfortable being, you know, in, in the side of Pisces. Um, but you came from a very similar planet like the one that I came from, but you're more of a water being. Um, and you actually literally, this is going to trip you out, uh, sometimes that happens to me as I go and I look. So there is a planet, and you can actually find this, Maria, because they've discovered it. There's a, a video on YouTube that tells you that there's like the 10 most amazing planets, and it's a planet that's all water. And the actual outside of it is ice so that the water doesn't go fly, I guess, flying off into, into the you know, into the, the atmosphere of whatever, you know, that's around it. But literally what I saw is that you literally come from this total watery planet. Um, and I want to see where it is. It, it is in like a far, far corner of the Milky Way. It almost is like at the other end of the Milky Way. And there is actually a group of planetary a, a planetary system there. That's one of the planets. There's one planet that's like all all fire. All um, there's a planet that's all like rock or earth. And then there's a planet that is, you know, all water. And obviously, you can't see the planet that is all like air or ether. Okay, it's kind of gaseous, like Venus would be. And you come from that that place. Um, so I totally understand why um, there's such a challenge when it's like the, the water is like merging with everything, you know, um, and it is very difficult for, for you t to be... Um, um, I know. I'm. I'm, I'm all over. Yes. I. I. I'm, yeah. I know what you're. T what you're trying to tell so, me. I know. So the bottom line is your water. Yes. Okay. And I. I had seen that. I can't remember not only water. I've been everything. All elements. Everything. Right. Literally. Right. So. But your main element that you actually are are in is is the water element. That's what I literally saw. That that's where you were created. Originally, yes. your soul origin is from the water itself. The waters of life. Yep, it resonates very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. If you're ready. So yeah, I'm ready. Be channeling. Yeah. Let's go to the second part. Let's go to the second part, and I'll and I'll actually bring in the avatar group consciousness. Hmm. It takes me just a few seconds to like let go of my ego and my personality and bring them in. Greetings. We are the Avatar Group Consciousness. We are a group of about 150 beings um, that is a consciousness group. Um, we are non-form. Um, we This is not really truly, we don't have labels where we come from. This is a label that um, we call the channel that we come through the little one. It's our little private joke and we do have quite a sense of humor. Um, but we're not here to talk about her or us. We're more here to talk about all of you. And to talk about, this is one of the things that, um, Maria, you had requested of us. To speak about this time frame on your planet and actually in your galaxy and what is going on, correct? So we're going to do a global... Um, yes. 
like a global expression and actually more like a galactic expression of what your galaxy is undergoing right now is quite spectacular. Um, it's one of the things that has happened very rarely in other galaxies, planetary systems. We are literally from another universal um, quadrant, if you like, another universe. Um, and we went, not us ourselves, but this group of us, this group consciousness, but we actually in our in our universe had a similar occurrence happen with one aspect of our galaxy that went into this evolution, revolutionary process of unfoldment that affected affected all life within that quadrant and that is literally what you all are experiencing is you're experiencing uh, like a fusion um, so so there's a fusion going on an atomic fusion yes is, is scientifically how we can describe it to you and that atomic fusion uh, with actually all of the subatomic um, cells is what we're going to call it of, of your quadrant of the universe is now becoming activated so there is a lot of shaking going on and what we mean by shaking is that old beliefs are being shaken off um, egos are being shaken off um, uh, your planet is actually going through huge, huge transformation. Um, and all of the beings that have chosen to incarnate on planet Earth in physical form from, we are going to call it from the grain of sand, all the way through to a whale. And that includes all of you humans, um, or all of you ETs and human bodies, um, are quite remarkable that you have that you are actually allowing this transformation to happen um, and we're quite excited about it and we know at the same time that arises the what what the little wood was calling the um, the shadow material in all of you all the fears all the doubts all of the um, the inner workings of the egoic uh, implanted material that has been there for lifetimes that are now being actually shaken very gently so that it can it, it can arise and move and move out of your bodies and move out of your consciousness into a conscious place or your unconscious into a conscious place so it could be dissolved to allow the new earth uh, because she is being birthed you see um, the new earth is actually now becoming um, at the same time and this is one thing we were hearing this conversation that the little one was having with all of you at the same time that you're in 3D you're at the same time in 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D, 8D, 10D, 11D, 12D, 13D, 14D, 15D and, and, and so this is, is a rare thing you see um, that that you can simultaneously peek in or or fly into these places, and that is actually what happened with Sabrina in her experience of watching that movie Lucy, is that she became all things simultaneously in all of these different um, dimensions. You see, um, and to us that's very exciting because. Um, if we give you a peek of what we actually look like, it, you wouldn't recognize us, you see, because we are not actually formed as bodies. We're not these physical beings like you or, or angelic beings. We, we are matter and antimatter simultaneously. And, and this is one of the things that we actually channeled quite a while ago through this being that we come through that we said that your planet would become matter and antimatter simultaneously and that is what's happening now. And we actually talked about this happening um, on your planetary system at a certain point 
we weren't sure when, but literally that's what's going on now. So a lot of beings are actually finding that objects appear, disappear, reappear, and they're going to start finding people appearing, disappearing, reappearing, and you're going to start having the abilities to be able to go travel um, and bilocate um, simultaneously to other dimensions. That can be very disturbing and confusing when you've had an egoic form that is very stuck in being in this body, right? <laughs> so we want to share with all of you that are here that are having some of these experiences and shed a light so that you understand that it's part of the evolutionary process on your planet. Um, and that there's some of you that are not going to end up staying in bodies and that you're actually going to transmute and transform into something greater. Um, and, and that the fear paradigm on your planet is now being de-evolved. It's, um, it's actually being taken off of the planetary grid so that you can have these multiverse experiences. So we want to let all of you know that are having these, dis what you would think of as a distortion or feel like your world is falling apart or aspects of your world are falling apart, they really are not. They're actually reconfiguring into a more dynamic process, yes, a more uh, expanded process that sometimes the ego is afraid um, to actually surrender into it. So our message today to all of you that are here listening is to start embracing that fear, embracing that egoic fear of the ego disappearing and start integrating it into the higher soul vibrational frequencies of your beingness. Um, to have the ego and the soul start making and doing their integration dance because that will assist you greatly in this transmutation process that the, that your your whole galaxy is going through not just your planetary system um, so we're quite excited about that and we're hoping that you will you will get what we are talking about where we're trying to to have you integrate so the aspects of you that feel lost or feel like you're going to disappear or that you don't exist to actually start working with those and sitting with those aspects of yourselves and start to really integrate them into your higher selves, into your higher beings or what the little one calls the infinite soul, the infiniteness of what you are um, and to start embracing those and accepting them because that truly is what's going to start really evolving you at a very quick pace um, so that is the main message we want to come with today um, to speak about and to bring shed light to all of you um, that are going through some some very transformative transmuting times so is there any question from anybody here specifically of the subject that we speak of and um, that you need a little bit of direction in? Well, my I have a question a little bit off the subject, but I let everyone else ask their question first. Okay, I've got one actually on this, so sure. um, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask. No, of course. Beautiful. That's why you bring it up. Um, <laughs> I'm known as Rowie, and um, I've had a very unusual start to 2016. Um, usually, repetitively every year because of my profession. I usually have a schedule for this type of year. And 2016 is usually, this study is very quiet. Now I've been going through some, and I don't mind saying here on camera, some very hard times through um, dealing with very simple things in life. Mm -hmm. um, experiencing time in a fashion of Days going by in seconds. Yes. Um, not being able to remember stuff, being able to remember other scenarios, having mm -hmm. dreams about um, parallel scenarios if I did things another way, um, 
it's just so much coming up. It's just really, it's 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 very non-linear. That's probably the best thing yeah. I can explain. Correct. Correct. Yes. So, your so question my question is, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just explained it to you in a nutshell. <laughs> Pretty um, much. What's basically going, and you're ahead of the curve. Um, a lot of beings are having the experience as you are, but you really are in the soup. Um, you really uh -huh. have had a lot of integration of the shadow material, so the, the, the ego personality is no longer holding on to reality as you knew it, and is, is going for the, the ride, you know, surfing on that galactic wave, shall we call it that, yes? I like it. And your days will become like that. And there will be days where you, you know, a day goes by in a second, and then there's day a day that will go by, and it feels like it's a whole week. Yeah. Um, and it can be very disconcerting to the egoic uh, mind. Um, not really the the shadow material, but more your the egoic mind that hasn't let go of linear time. So what we'd like for you to do is the next time you feel out of sorts, because that happens to you, and you go, oh, damn, I forgot this, or I, I, this didn't happen, or, or we lost mm -hmm. our, our place, to sit with the ego mind, literally, I'm putting the hand on, on the place where it belongs in your physical bodies, and to sit with it and to just be with it, and to allow it to communicate with you of what, it fears that it's not really letting go. So there's an aspect that is very logical, yes, that is more connected yeah. to the left brain than the right brain that hasn't integrated yet. And once you integrate that, you'll be in complete flow with this. You'll be able to move forwards, backwards in time, move into other dimensions, do all this, um, and then you'll be able to assist others in that process as well, uh -huh. since you're you're a little bit ahead of the ball. Thank Does that make sense? Yeah, it's been a, it's it was, 2015 was an amazing year, fantastic adventures and journey, and mm -hmm. you know you're looking forward to the new year and the positive positivity, and then you get thrown up against this wall, and you're like, oh. <laughs> it's just re remember that. See, that's that logical, um, that's that linear logical mind. That's mm -hmm. not going to go also of the years, of, of, of the Gregorian 2016, you know, and, and if I really, if we really told you what year it was, you'd be going, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like in Mayan calendar, you're actually in 100 or 200 years ahead of this time frame. Yep. Because it's a 26-day calendar instead of a 30, 31, 28 you know, they really mixed it up so you guys couldn't do this. So one of the exercises that we will suggest for you is to forget it's 2016, to just let that go yeah. and just be in the present moment now at mm -hmm. all times. And we know that's difficult for all of you to do. For yeah. us, it's easy because we're disembodied. We don't have a physical body to deal with and we don't... Um, it's a very different reality for us. Um, so we are sympathetic. Um, that you have chosen to incarnate, like we said, in these bodies, and that you actually are flowing <laughs> with this and, and allowing this transformation to happen. Um, because at the other end, what will happen is you will become multidimensional, quite literally, and you'll be able to come in and out of this dimension. That is ultimately what will happen to all of you, by the way. Sounds you'll pretty be, awesome. And you'll reappear, and you'll have all these amazing experiences. And some people are going to mistake that with ascension. Um, and we'll talk about that another time when we're invited here. We'll talk about the whole ascension enigma. <laughs> okay. well, yes, I would I like to question. do that. Yeah, there I would go. like to do that, Sonia. One time, just have it for ascension. Maybe we can, you know, have that. We well, she, she's not here, by the way. You're talking to the avatar group, but we'll yes. let her. <laughs> yes. <back. laughs> now, my question, I was going to actually ask you to see what is your perspective of first contact. Is it going to happen sometime soon? How, you know, how, to, how what is your, pers your perspective in general? How do you see it? 
<laughs> well, we see that first contact already happened. <laughs> it, you did? There, yes, it's just that you... It did? Not in 3D? And not in, uh, actually, it's happened and you guys have missed the boat because you've been in 3D instead of being in 5D. So, so <laughs> you, have, you have you believe that see a lot of a lot of beings that are in these physical forms that you guys have the human body believe that they literally have to see the ships coming down and they have to see the ETs coming out of the ships. But there's so many of you that have already had these experiences on a very personal level, in group levels actually in in groups. Um, so this it, what you what what has been purported that you're going to have all these ships come and they're going to come out of their ships and they're going to talk to you, that is already happening on a very personal level with billions, not millions, billions of you, you see. Um, and the government, uh, the, 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 the cabal, or there's many titles for them, that that tried to kabasha. See, we we did this, um, and and I'm not speaking just as the avatar group consciousness, but as the as the ETs that that gathered together and decided to put this all together. We we thought, well, if we come as an armada, and then these guys can pretend like we're coming to attack them, and and then they can play their little games. Instead, if we come to each of you individually, there's no way they can control that. So it ha already happened, um, and there has been times where there we've been there's been ETs right beside you, and you haven't actually recognized them because they they do actually um, some of the ET ships will will disappear. You, you won't be able to see them, but you'll be able to see a shimmer of them. So you have to be very aware and very perceptive to actually literally see it but we've been having contact with all of you and and not just us as the avatar group consciousness but as the ET families have been having contact with you in all sorts of ways all over your planetary system for a very long time and we do it like this because then it can't be controlled you see so the the arrival of an armada of ships to come down and us to get out at this point would not be possible with the beings that are controlling your planet. Um, there's quite a few videos that you can go look at where you can literally see some of the lasers that the 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 government that is the hidden government controlling that when then you have ships that come out of the sun because that that is our stargate to get to you here in this planetary system. Um, they start shooting at them. Um, so <laughs> it's better to do it the way we're doing it, undercover, so to speak. Any 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 time are we going to have that the way that you're you're saying they're going to start shooting at them, like like three D or whatever? Three D with three D, they they are already are. That's why they put their star Star Wars thing out there. Um, they actually sent it out their satellite. That's the whole thing with their star. Literally, it does exist, by the way. This is something that um, their black ops, you know, that they've taken all this money as part of what they've done um, because they want to. We're talking about, and, and I want to talk kindly about them, yes? I, I, we always do uh, talk kindly about any of the beings. Um, the little one, the channel that we come through, has just discovered this. Um, that, that these souls are very young souls and they're very insecure and that's why they're taking have taken these these conditions and put these conditions on the planet of power and domination and control is because they're so insecure and they're so so very young that they feel like they have to retain that power so whatever is gonna it could collapse their their form of control and power they will fight against you see um, so look at we got to look at the the um, the blessing in this is that 
that has caused all of you to, that's the, the switch that has turned on the lights inside of every single human being on the planet that's now waking up. So that's, that's the beautiful thing about what they've done, that you could choose to look at it as bad or ugly or horrible, but truly they're your, they're your alarm clock or your wake-up clock for all of you. Yeah. Start paying attention, Maria, please. Start paying attention to your surroundings and start paying attention to your feeling when you feel energy coming towards you that feels very not from here because you literally then have groups of beings that are sitting right next to you on your couch and and all you have to do is close your eyes and start communicating with them telepathically. Well, they do talk to me all the time, different mm -hmm. and from various, you know, universes, not only from, you know, yeah, but... Um, yeah. But disclosure is what you're talking about, and, and disclosure to that degree until, until the younger souls, we will put it that way, that are the cabal that have been controlling your planet for a very long time, until they let go and they start surrendering to this process, they will not permit that to happen. Yes. I think someone has a question, Chris. Sure. Hi. Um, hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, I just wanted to connect in with your energy. Um, I have actually have video footage of ships coming out of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise, right? Um, um, you, you probably know... Um, this man that goes by the name of, uh, um, I'm gonna, we're going to say his name backwards, um, Har Haramin um, is his last name, and he's a new quantum physicist. Nassim, um, Nassim, Nassim Haramin? Thank you, yes, him. And he has a lot of footage of this, yes? And a lot of footage of, of the, the big ships coming out of the sun and coming towards the, the earth and different planetary systems around here. So um, to answer your question, yes, there's, there's a lot of that that's going on. Um, and there's a lot of what they call veiled ships where you actually, um, once they come closer um, to this dimension and to the planetary system, they are definitely putting themselves, uh, making themselves invisible, but they are here, and there's quite a few of them. There, you have a lot of them, actually, that are um, circling in the outer outer perimeter um, of your Earth, and some of them that actually go into, because your planet is hollow, just like the sun, just like your bodies, you know, you have your chakras, they do too. And they come in through the smaller ones. The smaller ships can do that. They can go into the hollow earth. And then from there, go out through the different stargates that are on the planetary grid. I was wondering, like, once I was looking up at the sky, and there was, like, a, it looked like there was a black sheet over it because there was no stars, and I felt like it was something being veiled. Yes, that's, that is literally... Um, a starship that actually has put itself, you know, veiled itself. So that's why you can't see the stars above it. Some of them have the technology that they become like glass. So they're transparent and you could literally see through them and you can't see them quite literally. Mm -hmm. But if you see them during the day, they will have a shimmer on them. So, so it almost looks like, especially in a very hot day, and if they're down pretty low, close to you, you literally see like a wave shimmering in front of you. And that literally is a ship that's right there in front of you. Okay, I've seen that too. As somebody had mentioned just a little bit ago, and this is a new thing, I'm abreast on, sh I like the ship talk. Um, she sees star it's like stars or satellites is what I've, pick up almost, but they're sparkling rainbow. Are those ships? Um, actually, you have a stargate that's been placed on your 
um, planetary system or outside of it that does look like a rainbow and it's fairly large um, and that actually is a stargate to go to the other galaxies and a stargate to come here and it also is the Arcturians put it there by the way um, uh -huh. so we'll, we'll credit um, so that they could start bringing their ray of consciousness and and actually projecting it to the earth and to all of the earthlings here so I'll that they frequency yeah, thank you. I'll tell her that because her whole lineage is about gatekeeping. Aha! Yeah. <laughs> Still like that. Thank you. No surprise. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Hi, this is Michelle again. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, so I was curious, is it um, in your experience um, during this process when things, when time becomes very slippery and you're kind of in and out of 3D, yes. um, is it often brought, is it more common for the individual to discern the shadow issues that are trying to be worked out of their ego system or are they merely transmuted? Like, I kind of just, like, gave in to whatever and allowed, like, I didn't want to know what it was or I didn't even think. I just, I didn't know what it was, so I was like, okay, I allow the energy to just kind of do what it's doing. So I don't know if, is the goal to uncover and be cognizant of this or just allow the higher energies to transmit uh, it? It's difficult so so here's the paradox. If you're evolved enough that you can actually just allow the energies to transmute um, and feel feel all the feelings mm -hmm. that arise and yeah. be, be present with them, yeah. you will evaporate them. If yeah. you are one of those beings that doesn't have that ability that is um, and that patterns keeps repeating itself and mm -hmm. you still and you're stuck, then it's a really wise thing to actually go deeply into it and to find the core, to find the actual core of what created this this thought, yes, this experience mm -hmm. in order to resolve itself. So there, there are two ways to approach this and it just depends how evolved you are and what you will find out is if this keeps popping up in your consciousness and keeps repeating itself and you keep having those negative emotions arising over and over, it hasn't cleared, correct? That's your evidence. It kind of wasn't negative, it was merely brought to my attention there was something to give up. Okay, okay. Something and, to start. And I didn't feel like I had to know what that was. Very well. Okay. Does Thank that... Does that assist you in your transformation? Have you do you feel lighter and do you feel more at ease and more at peace within yourself, I, or are you still going through it? I'm um, actually well now. I'm not fragmented into like what looks like twelve. I don't know, like levels back away from my human kind All of right. experience. So I've kind of coalesced back together. What to okay. what feels normal for me at this time. Great. So this has all been today. So, yeah, I guess that's the answer to that. Great. So as we were talking before and we said how um, to be in the present moment in the now instead of thinking of, like, today or thinking about the next minute or thinking about, oh, we're, well, we're, you're in 2016 and now it's supposed to look like this. Mm -hmm. um, the more you become present in your own moment, the more you'll have these amazing experiences of being multidimensional. That makes sense? It does. Oh, Thank yes. you very much. Yes, you're I'm welcome. Happy. Namaste. Any other questions? Valerie has a question. Very good. Thank you, Maria. And thank you, Sonic. I just wanted to tell you that uh, I really appreciate your time today. It's just been awesome. Um, I'm hoping to schedule in an appointment with you sometime soon. Um, and, and anyways. I'm kind of floating in and out like I came back and then I come in. And I hope you guys are okay with that. that. Now it's me. I'm back. 
when you guys awesome. start saying your name, I kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they come back. That's, they do that automatically. They'll just like start channeling. So that's great. Cool. Okay. Um, my question was that I've been told that I have a hole in my heart. Okay. And kind of a mist over half of it as well. I'm a little bit concerned about it because um, I've had relatives that have um, passed from uh, congestive heart failure. And my mother seems to be looking at that right now too. So um, I just want to know what you would recommend for the forgiveness and healing that would maybe well, most help. Sure. And can I ask the people in the background, whoever has people talking in the background, to like mute themselves, <laughs> so we could get focused here. So one of the things that um, is really critical here. Um, so there's a hole. There's a physical hole in your heart that you were born with, right? Is that what you're saying? No, I think it's accumulated over time. <laughs> Okay. And hurt. Okay. So that can that to me denotes like if it's accumulated over time, what we have a tendency to do is we have a tendency with these physical bodies, the imprint, the emotional imprint of a traumatic event that happened, okay? Sometimes a traumatic thought, like I'll I'll be very transparent with the whole world and with you guys because I'm like that anyways and I, I you know, that's part of being an authentic being, is that throughout my whole life I was very suicidal and have suicidal thoughts, okay? And I'm sure a lot of you can relate because we all are aliens coming to this planetary system and, you know, it doesn't feel like home. <laughs> you know, it feels very weird. And so what happens is that when we implant, and I've done that with myself and I've seen it in others, that we implant these thoughts, okay, this thought form of I don't want to be here, it gets embedded in different aspects of our body and that's how people end up either with heart conditions and they close their heart off or they have cancer or they have a myriad of different ways that it expresses itself. Okay, And, and what is really important for you to do is to start focusing in on what was the beginning, like what's the root of that thought pattern or that embedded thought where did it take root? Where did it, and that's part of the work that I do when I do sessions with people is where did this originate? And I go back into the causal body again to find out what the origin of it is. And once we find it, then we can unravel it. Not, then we can do the, basically the psycho-spiritual work of uh, having it evaporate. And the moment it does that, the body is amazing. It's so magical. The body itself will start to heal like instantly, like super fast. It'll start to, so whatever is going on with people's hearts, whatever is going on, you know, uh, with people's bodies, that will start to regenerate itself because the body has an amazing power to regenerate itself. Um, so twofold. One of the things that you could do on your own is start navigating into those places of where didn't I love myself enough? Where did I want to self-destruct? Where did I, I have a, a, that, that feeling of I don't want to be here? You know, how deep does it go and how, how far back? And how many times have I repeated that that has caused this condition in my heart? Um, that's one of the things is to do an exploration there and then the other thing is to start uh, embracing being okay with it being okay with because this is how we learn and instead of um, being hard on yourself and going why would I do that to, it's like don't don't even go there you know no should I could have would have it's like there's a lesson here there's a there's a beautiful gift that is being given to you and to just hold that space and be with it and go Okay, so I didn't love myself. And, I, and, you know, when I'm talking to you right now, it's almost like I'm going into a session with you. I feel this profound, in the heart, I feel this profound sadness. And I hope you don't mind me doing this in front of everybody. Um, like a very, very profound, like almost um, a grief, like a grieving of, of not having had enough, like of not having had 
somebody truly like authentically love you for who you are and feeling very alienated from that and most of of our disease of being out of ease with our bodies is from feeling that alienation and, and feeling abandoned that's really at the core of it um, but I literally like connected to your heart and went whoa you know it's like I'm creating this hole in me so I can get the heck out of here you know it's almost like you're creating a stargate in your heart that we could actually reverse, that you can reverse and create a wholeness there where you don't have to have the same thing that occurred with your family. You know, you don't have to follow that pattern that's a familial pattern that you were born into. You know, I, I truly, truly honestly with you guys, I don't, I think that's something that has been embedded in us as a belief, as a thought pattern that has been programmed into us that our genetic pool is what is going to cause our demise and I don't agree with it. I have the ability and the power and so do you to change that, to totally change that and to have a totally different experience. Um, so I do want to share this with you guys and with anybody that watches this video that truly that is a lie that has been perpetrated upon us. Um, by the mainstream medical community because that's how they basically financially benefit. You know, so we could start unraveling like the emotional core issue that 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 grooved in, you know, and that's what I see in your heart is that there's this grooving in, this deep kind of like it is grief. Like I felt that it's tremendous sadness and tremendous grief that's so grooved in that we start ungrooving it and we start unraveling it and we literally can go in there photonically with the quantum field and photonically and actually quantum healing and start regenerating the cells around that area to completely become whole you know and take you back to your divine blueprint because we have the ability okay. What kind of appointment? What kind of appointment would I need to schedule with you to do that? Um, I would do like uh, the medical intuitive scheduled appointments. Um, actually, there's one that is on my website that you would go to, and it actually is in the services. If you go, you'll see a medical intuitive healings, and that's a one hour appointment. You could do a half hour. That's the all inclusive. I allow people to like choose however they want to do this. They could either do an hour or they could do half an hour. Um, and, you know, the half hour, I charge, so that you all know, I charge $2 a minute. And then I do charge, if if people send me money through, um, what's it called, um, Square Cash as a friend, and I send you the thing on your on your phone, you know, on your iPhone or your, your other phones, there is no transaction fee, and I don't charge it. If, if people don't have that ability... You know, I have PayPal who charges me a transaction fee unless you send money as a friend. Um, or you could pay through Flint who charges me 2%. So I have to pass that charge on. So what I usually do is I tell people, you know, if you just want to do it without the transaction fee, just contact me and we'll do it either through Square Cash or, or you can send um, an email to info at sonianovic.com and send me like a, a session for... 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes an hour. And what I tell people is um, people that buy packages or people that buy an hour session, if we just use a half hour, you have another 30 minutes credit to use with me for the rest of the year. So, Sonia, a nice yes. way to, yes. oh, I just wanted to, I just wanted you to um, tell your website again because we have it posted for us, for our listener. Sure. So I have it at Sonic Nova, S O N I C, like Sonic Burgers, but it's not a burger. Sonic Nova and N O V A, like a supernova. And so it's sonicnova.net is the name of the website. So for those of you that are listening to this um, transmission, that's where you can go. And, um, and what I'll probably do is when I get this video and I find it on Facebook, I'll post it on my website and you know, and I'll put the link to the website, so. So okay, that's... Sabrina thinking. had a question. Sure. Sure. Go ahead, Sabrina. 
It's sort of in the line where you were just talking about. So <clears throat> my question is, um, I sort of feel like my compass, it's, uh, I don't know if it's gone, lost, or just not moving. <laughs> Um, is that your third eye compass, or is that what you're speaking? <laughs> I want to be real clear. Here. I wish it was that one. I wish it was that one. Um, no, just just in general, um, not sure in which direction to go. Okay, in your life path, you mean? In my life path, yeah. And okay. I, I've asked my higher self, um, but I don't seem to get an answer. So. I don't really know, you know, so where to go. So there's like a blockage there, right? Because you're not yeah. getting answers from your your soul, and there's something that's actually blocking. Like, what are you gonna do next, right? What's your I, next? Um, okay, so I approach this two ways. <laughs> One is allowing the the you could actually with the group that you have, which is awesome. I don't know if you've ever done, um, and I do this on my radio shows. Um, I do do a radio show, uh, and I'm going to start doing it, not this Saturday, because i got to figure out my my technical stuff. Um, my mixer, I'm still having challenges with it. But next Saturday, I'll be having a show on, on Spreaker called Surfing the Cosmic Waves, and we can talk about this, and we can actually build, literally what I do is I build a quantum... Um, like hologram and what we could do is we could all join there and get together and we can help you build this quantum hologram and see what shows up in the field for you so that you know what your next step is so that's a really cool way to do that because that's all you know that's your soul and all of us assisting you in seeing what's next for you that's one of the ways that you could do that or you could do that with your own group if you know how to do that if you know how to build you know um, that that quantum kind of like cocoon almost and we asked all kinds of guides to come in I do that as I ask all kinds of guides there's there's previous um, previous audios that you can listen to where you can listen to me where we bring in all these beings and they all bring us different information and we have you know you have a group of you that can bring in different pieces of the puzzle to help you get there. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is like the old linear way. Kind <laughs> of <laughs> doesn't work too well anymore, you know. It's like, okay, so I've done this in my life and I have I have all these talents and abilities, so what's next for me? So how am I going to do this or that or the other, you know? And to write that down and write down your list. I think it's more exciting and more fun when you get together with a group of people. And you build, you know, you build this quantum field in which you invite guides to come in and you invite all kinds of beings to come in to get you to the place where you want to go and to see things that you haven't seen before. Possibilities that are there that you haven't seen before is a really cool thing. Yeah, that sounds interesting. If you guys haven't done that, I, we could no. also... Sonia, yeah. do you want to talk about your radio show as well? Yes. Please. Sure. We haven't done that. We 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 have not we have not done done that. So that actually sounds very interesting. It's a really cool tool. It is really really. Um, I totally want to share it with you guys because it's something that we have used to actually change and transmute things on the planet. Um, and in like there was a huge huge. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Mazatlan was going to get, and I'm from there, I'm from Mexico originally, was going to get hit with a, like a mega hurricane. And we got together, you know, in the quantum field, and we actually had it go away. It just went, and it was just a tropical storm at the end. So we could do stuff like that as a group. It's very powerful when we come together as a group and do that. But um, I'll tell you about my show. It's on Spreaker's. Uh, Spreaker.com, and it's called Surfing the Cosmic Waves, um, and I'm your host, and I bring guests in. I'm going to start doing that, and I'm also st going to start working um, and learning how to use this platform 
so that I can bring guests in like you guys to speak to us and give us different ideas, different concepts. And um, I really want to start doing that again because I used to have a show that was called Beyond the Living with Real Coaching Radio where it was interactive like this. It was very cool. And um, guests would come in and ask questions and we would do shows about all kinds of different things. So the whole premise of Surfing the Cosmic Waves radio, which is on Spreaker's, is that we actually are surfing the cosmic waves and we're seeing, we're getting to know each different aspects of our true and divine nature and our inner power and how we can share with that and how we can co-create, you know, the 5D world, six, like the avatar said, I was like, wow, you know, they're, they're like 12, 20, 50, you know, dimensions that we can go into. Um, and as a group, I really truly feel like there is no limits to us. You know, so we could totally explore that. And I'll, I'll be happy to come back and teach you guys here to your group how to build the quantum field and how to create this dynamic um, in, in, in it's very holographic because what happens is when we create it here, you see it expressed in the outer world. It's very powerful and very holographic and very cool. And I'd love to teach you guys that technology. Yes, I want to actually ask uh, you to come back and talk about Ascension if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, yes, and, and quant yes, and what you just mentioned. Yes, yeah, please. The quantum field is pretty... Yeah, yeah, we're going to schedule that again, Sonia. <laughs> That's, you know, there was somebody that was asking me because there was this, you know, let's see, what did I call it? I have to look at this. They were asking me if we were gonna act, if we could actually, um, if I could do that with them, and I said, yeah, it'd be a great idea to build something like this and do. I call it like a quantum. Well, I guess I call it a hologram. You know, where we all go into the hologram with our minds and with our hearts and with our thoughts, and we start, you know, closing our eyes and seeing this whole world that's right in front of us that's invisible to most people. And all of a sudden, you'll see it express itself on the outside, on the out outer world, and you'll go, wow, how did that happen? You know? Because <laughs> the quantum field is infinite, right? Just like we are. So, yeah, I'll be happy to come back and share all those things with you guys. So, does anybody have any other questions? And I'm hoping that I did answer your question, Sabrina, you know, um, that you had. I hope I answered it. So that sort of. <laughs> yeah. I think I, mean, I didn't answer what your next step is because truly that would take really yeah. um, either a session or doing it as a group. And what I got is like, no, we should do this as a group. We should literally like, you should get together with Maria and all the other people and I can teach you how to do the quantum field and how to set up the hologram, kind of like on, on Star Trek, you know, where they okay. go to the hologram. So that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. May I ask a question, Sonia? Sure. Please. Okay. I've been having trouble explaining how I was disconnected for past a whole year from uh, 3D. How would you best you can help me to, to explain that to the others? I didn't know how to explain it really well. <laughs> And when you say disconnected from the 3D, that you're already like you're already in like a five or six D state, like your your consciousness is already navigating and traveling through. Is so that's the best way I would describe it? Is yeah. That literally you're operating. You know, even though you may have like these so-called physical bodies, which are 99% empty space. Isn't that interesting? Quantumly speaking. Um, and even though you, you know, do what you do um, and you have a life and all those things that you're literally, it's like the brain, it's really interesting. It's like the, and I'm not talking about this brain, you guys, because this is the brain that kind of blocks us a lot. I'm talking about this brain and this brain, the tummy brain and the lower brain, because we have, you know, we have four Dantians, they're called Dantians um, in, in Chinese. Um, and we have four minds. We have this mind, and we have this mind, and we have this mind, and we have the lower mind, which is basically our reproductive mind. 
and literally sinking in, and that's what happens is that when you start sinking in and integrating the soul, that's when you start moving into more of a 5D, 6D experience. So that's how I would explain it is that literally you're already, you're already, like all of your centers are already navigating and moving in, in, in a 5D realm, but you're still, so it's almost like having, you know, having one foot here in 3D and another foot already here or here. here. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't, yeah. I don't know. So, yes, it was so hard, um, you know, for me to explain it to people. I didn't know how to explain it, though. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, I was told by my soul that, you know, how it, how it was really, I have to come back. And I asked my Pleiadian, family uh -huh. to help me to ground. Now I actually feel how grounding is because it's 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 way different. It feels way different right now for me. Good. That's awesome. So you feel like at the same time that you could be like floating or flying, right? You you could Yeah. Be like I'm not not <clears throat> you're not like dispersed all over the place. You know what I mean? It's like when we're, and I know some of you are having that experience, you know, that you feel very like, you know, dispersed all over the place and kind of not congealed. Um, and what I have to say about that is that that's because you're experiencing all the multidimensionality that you are, you know, and just be with it. Be in the moment with it is is the message that I keep sharing with you guys that the avatar shared with you is to truly be in that moment and be okay in this moment I'm feeling you know from the very negative experiences and allow yourself to feel that anger rage hate whatever you know but judgment to the very high level experiences of love and compassion and joy and all those things you know because this we're given a gamut of emotions. We were given a gamut of, of emotions not to stay only in this place because if you are, then there's a lot of like shadow material that you're repressing. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yes, Sonia. That's what I was told by my soul that mm -hmm. I, were, I had it all up, but I have to bring it down to 3D, yes. to this physical world. It's not all about up there. It isn't. It, it no, has to come. Yeah, it has to come down. I, I have to ground. I have to bring it down. Yeah, so, because that's and I, I, it, the way that information was given to me, sometimes it's yeah. not. It's it's not words. It's energetic. I just knew it, and I got it. It was like a light, you know, it, like a what? bulb in my. And I like, oh, I got it. I know that one. What I was missing, <laughs> but it took me so long. Yeah. I get it. You know, and you probably had to integrate that too, and that's what took so long is the integrating of understanding it, of physically understanding what you're going through. I always tell people, you know, people that, especially people that are very into reading a lot of books and and being very analytical and also being very, um, um, I forget the word, but though people like that have a tendency of not really experiencing life. And you don't get wisdom by reading books. You get wisdom by experiencing whatever gamut of emotions, whatever you're going through, that's how you gain wisdom, and that's why they embedded it into you that way. That's why they had you feel the highs and the lows. You know, so you could literally feel, and when you feel and you go through it, guess what? You just got wiser. You just graduated. <laughs> so people that have a... Yeah. Very intellectual and stay in their intellect and read a lot of books. You know, they're not allowing this part to sink into this part and to feel all the aspects of themselves. You know, so you definitely, you know, we all need to learn how to do that more. To just allow to be with whatever is in the moment and be okay with it and not judge it. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> any questions yeah. else? Anybody in the room? Anyone has any question? No. Well, I guess yes, a stargazer has a question. I okay. Guess. Yes. Great. Please ask. 
Hey, hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> yeah, all of them know me by that calling card. Okay. My actual name is Raymond. Hi, Raymond. Nice to meet you. What do you feel that I need to work on in my heart? You know, it's really interesting because your heart is very paradoxical. Like there's an aspect of you that's very much at peace and at ease with yourself, and then there's other aspects of the heart that at the same time um, are like, because of social programming, feeling like pushed, like you have to push really hard, you know, and that you have yes. to, you know what I mean? It's like that's, yes. that... And what I have to say about it is that um, all the masters didn't get there by pushing so hard. To be more gentle and loving with yourself, with that aspect that wants to push, find out where that, again, that causes resistance, you know? Yeah, so, I know. Yeah. <laughs> To get into that space with yourself of going, okay, when the resistance comes up, when you're pushing really hard, go, okay, what? Go behind that. Can you get to the other emotional layers behind that of what's, what's causing you to push so hard? Sometimes I can. Okay. Sometimes you can do that or sometimes you can't? Sometimes I can. Okay. Great. And sometimes you can't? Or sometimes no. it's hard to do, or is it Correct. only okay? Yeah, that's what I was asking. I just want that to get clarity. Okay, so when this is all for all of us to be aware, not just for you, but this goes for all of us. Okay, when there's something driving us, pushing us, and I'm very driven. Okay, so I totally can relate to you. I'm guilty of the same thing. Maybe not in my heart, but, you know, in my life that I have to go, 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 go. You know, it, it's just very embedded in me as a program, as a pattern. And I, and I have to learn how to, like you, become conscious and aware of it and then start surrendering and being okay with it and going, why am I pushing so hard? I don't have to push so hard. Just be. Things will come, you know. So it's more of an embedded programming, you know what I mean? It's more like really grooved in. And, and in order to ungroove it and create another pattern, we need to, to become aware of it first and then start working with it. You know, and I think sometimes it's easy for you to do that and it, you're aware of it and you go, oh, yeah, I don't have to push so hard and you can just go. Because you have a beautiful heart, you know, you have a beautiful radiant heart. You know, and then sometimes you forget and you go into that manic, I gotta push, 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 push. And that's when the lights need to, like, learn to get the lights going on and go, okay, I don't have to push so hard. I can just be with this. Does that make sense, Raymond? Yes, it does. Cool. Okay. I hope that helped you. It does. And thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Or should we wrap it up, you guys? Yeah, we're coming up to two hours now, so... Yeah, we um, should wrap it up. Maria? <laughs> <laughs> so much, you guys. Yes, yes, yes. I yes, really Rome. Maria, my soul yeah. sister. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you, thank you, guest, and uh, <laughs> we'll wrap it up. Okay. All right. I just want to thank you again, Sonia. It was a pleasure having you, and I'm really grateful for accepting my invitation. Oh, thank you. I really enjoy your energy. I get high. I just try to actually <laughs> just not jump in. <laughs> I hope you yes. are yes. I try I to behave you. very well because I do that a lot. Thank you. When I get excited so around people. To be able to do this for you guys, really. I love doing this kind of work. So, thanks. Well, thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for being with us today. I mean, it's been a really, really different um, kind of webinar today with lots of fresh energies and everything going on. So it's been exciting. And thank you, Sonia, for coming. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, sorry, sorry, thank you, Maria, for being good. Thank you, Valerie, for helping. Sabrina, everybody else. It's been absolutely wonderful and magic of getting the word out there today. So.
Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Hukulo TV. We hope you had enjoyed this session with us today. Blessings to Sonia and everybody else. Um, namaste. namaste to all. <laughs> we love you, and we will see you tomorrow for Jim's okay. webinar. So next webinar for us is our regular Saturday webinar, and that's usually at 10 a.m. EST. So come and join us along at humancolony.org. Namaste. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks.